What's up guys? Grim here and welcome to my channel. If you were one of the people that left a comment in my last Saturday video, you are entered into the giveaway of a month long patron pass. And the winner is... Congratulations, enjoy your month long patron pass. And this week we're giving away five of the depleted supply crates. So yes, that does mean that we are having five winners. If you would like to be entered into this contest, please leave your character name and server in the comment section below. That way we know exactly where to send the prizes. But there is a catch, you must be subscribed to the channel. So if you are not subscribed, we will have to find a new winner and you will unfortunately be left in the dust as a loser. I will also be making a post on the Rift forums about the giveaway. So if you leave a comment in that post, you will be entered into a sixth supply crate giveaway. So leave a comment in the comment section below here and go to the Rift forums and leave a post in the thread that I'm gonna make about the giveaway. Win free stuff, support Grim. it's a win-win, just take part. Winners will be announced in the next Saturday video. Good luck everybody. I have to show you guys the appreciation that I have for everything you guys do for me. And a lot of you support me by giving me gifts and even donating money and stuff like that. And I cannot thank you enough. You guys have been so supportive. Uh, even the people sending me tales in the game saying that they love my builds. They love the videos. Uh, keep doing what I'm doing. It means a lot to me guys and I really appreciate it. So the first donation that I have to point out here that somebody gave me was they gave me a green panda for my warrior to ride around on, which was on my wish list. If you go to my Rift characters wish list, you can see some of the stuff that I'm trying to save up to get. And this guy viewed the wish list and went ahead and bought the panda bear for me, the green panda. So thank you so much, Brio and he put in his message it was in your wish list thank you thank you so much i cannot i cannot express how grateful i am the second donation we got is from lionos and he's donated rex to me before and this time he sent me two rex which is just mind-blowing you guys man it means so much to me in his message he writes Hey man, here's a couple more. Figured Rex works for everything, so I'll just send you some when I can. Okay, so I was wondering how the hunt for cleric builds is coming. I definitely need some ideas on this one. Just went with the chamois pre-made, and it's not terrible, but man do I feel squishy. Hills is fine, but DPS is tougher, and Defiler seems confusing to me at the moment. Uh, the spec that I've been running with my cleric lately has been Inquisitor. Uh, I've been wanting to make a video on it real soon. However, it's there's a lot of variations to Inquisitor, so I'm trying to figure out which one I want to show in a build video. Thank you for being so supportive. That's the third Rex that you've sent me so far. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are an amazing person. Uh, I really appreciate it. This last donation here is actually a cash donation. Uh, guys, what are you doing, man, for you guys to send me cash is just crazy to me. Uh, I can't thank you enough. Uh, this particular person sent me $20 and says, buy something awesome, haha, -ha. and it's from a guildie of mine named Nikayla. I believe that's how you sell your name. Uh, it might be Nichela. Not sure, but thank you so much, man. It, dude, the, the money donations help so much. I can't thank you enough. You rock. You are absolutely awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, now on to the 61 Assassin build video. What's up, guys? It's time to go into the 61 Assassin build that I've been promising and finally delivering. So I hope you guys enjoy it, and I hope you find it very useful. We're going to jump right into this build, so let's open up the soul tree here. And this is a build that Ecker gave me, and it is a very high DPS rogue assassin build, but it's also able to take a little bit of a hit. So it's not like a lot of the traditional glass cannon specs that 
can kill people but once it gets targeted by a pyro it instantly dies or if another rogue opens up on you you might as well just wait on your soul res timer in the warfront that ain't this type of spec so this is just an all-around good PvP spec to survive and kill lots of people including healers so we're going to go right into this and the link for this build will be in the description below so if you can't see it on the screen feel free to go down there and look at the build there but we will also have a secondary link that is a little bit more of a DPS spec but it is a true glass cannon as in you will die if somebody targets you I don't recommend that build but some people like to roll like that so I'll provide it for you but of course the macros and buffs are going to change a little bit with a little different spec so yeah all right this spec here goes 61 into assassin 11 into rift stalker and the 11 points in rift stalker are 5 into unseen fury 1 into phantom blow 4 into great fortitude and one into shadow assault and the four points into marksman are in single-minded focus all right that's the build like i said it'll be in the description below so if you need to see it there feel free all right this is our spam macro here and i do have to throw a disclaimer on this it has swift shot at the end but most experienced assassin PVPers do not put it in the build macro. The reason for that being is that right now there is a, a bug with assassins that you can go up and start stabbing somebody doing your back backstab and all of a sudden it'll start shooting your bow and you'll be doing your swift shot instead of stabbing people like you want. So a lot of them will opt to put that in a separate button and I've got it in the macro here because a lot of people do like it as simple as possible. So, yeah, this will mostly work. But, yeah, if you start shooting your bow once you're trying to stab somebody, don't say I didn't warn you. All right. And all the macros will be in the description below as well. I make it very easy on you guys. And hopefully you got the right type of browser to where you can copy and paste it from down there. And if you don't... Unfortunately, you might have to type out all these macros. So this is the finisher here. Now, the cool thing about this finisher is it has a ranged finisher in it with hasted shot. And hasted shot also makes it to where you have 20% increase in your movement speed. So it's going to allow you to run down people and stab away at them and feel bad for them once you're standing over their corpse. All right, the third macro here is our bleed macro. This is going to apply our big bleed on there, which is jagged strike. And then it's also going to apply a smaller bleed, which is puncture. And I'll show you guys how to use all that shortly. Our fourth macro here is our slip away macro. This is going to allow us to go into stealth right in the middle of a fight. So if you see a lot of people targeting you and you need to get away, this is what you'll be hitting and it has a lot of things in it which like I said about the earlier macro you might want to start separating some stuff as soon as you learn the build but this works very very well and you can continue to use it forever if you like it uses clean soul because basically I'm going to explain whenever you try to slip away Usually you're taking a lot of damage, you're dotted up, you're trying to survive, and you're trying to get out of that situation. Well, this macro here is going to apply Cleanse Soul, which is going to remove those dots from you. It's going to use Enduring Brew, which is going to heal you some. It's going to use uh, your Stellar Healing Tonic, which is a healing potion. And uh, you have to have the items for that. You know, you have to actually buy it from the auction house or something. But it's basically going to heal you up and remove all those dots because you know you're already really damaged. You're probably dotted up when you're trying to get away. And a lot of people will die once they slip away because they're still taking so much damage. And usually there's AoE hitting the area too. So you have to try to survive through that. And it also casts Hidden Veil there. Hidden Veil, I guess it's saying. And th what that does is it makes you where you can go into stealth. And if somebody is AoE in the area, it won't bring you out of stealth. 
So, all right, here is our movement boosting macro, and it uses shadow shift and on the double, which shadow shift makes you teleport forward. I think it's like 15 meters, 20 meters, something like that. And then on the double increases your movement speed. So if your slip away is down and you need to get out of a situation, turn around and hit this macro and try to save yourself. As you can see in my macro here, I have charged mirror. That is a planar attunement buff. So take it out of the macro if you don't have that planar ability. And it won't be in the description below in the macro down there because most people probably won't have that planar ability. And I'm not going to put it in the macro for you guys to accidentally macro in there and not have it. All right, this is our charge macro. It uses shadow assault, which basically teleports to your target and puts you behind them to where you can start backstabbing. Uh, but it also has leaping plunge, which is just like a warrior charge, which is really cool. All right, that's the macros. Let's go to the buffs here. And you can have three poisons up at a time on this particular buff. So we're going to have three poisons, which is malicious poison, debilitating poison, and lethal poison. And then our other buff is plane bound resilience. And of course, all your guild and planar buffs or whatever. Now, some people like to have leeching poison on instead of one of those first three. So it's all your choice whether you want to use it or not. Leeching poison, of course, does some damage, but it also heals you. So it adds to your survivability. Uh, if you're going to replace one of the uh, poisons with leeching poison, I kind of recommend it be lethal poison because you're going to have to give up some of your DPS in order to increase your survivability. So your poisons would be malicious poison, debilitating poison, and leeching poison instead if you choose to go that route. All right. Let's go into my bar down here. We have the backstab macro, which is your spam macro. We have the finisher macro, uh, the bleed macro, and then we have impale, which is going to be another bleed, which is a finisher though. And then we have the stealth button. We have our charge macro. We have poison malice. And we have our movement speed increase macro there our slip away macro and of course make sure that you have break free on a separate button do not put it in your macros people so many of you guys do it and it's such a huge failure in pvp because once uh, you know somebody might snare you or something and you don't care if you're snared but yeah if you have it in your mac break free in your macro you might accidentally use it on that snare and then all of a sudden whenever you really need to get out of a situation your break free is down so yeah, don't put it in your macros, guys. All right, on our other stuff here, we have Foul Play, which is a four-second stun. Blinding Powder, which uh, confuses the target for 10 seconds or until damaged. Uh, we have Poison Gas, which is basically just like Blinding Powder, but it's an AoE. So, and Then we have Enduring Brew. We have it on a separate button just in case we need to heal up. And we don't want to slip away. We have clean soul for the same reason. If we need to remove dots and we're not trying to blow our slip away because we don't need to get away at the moment. And of course drink and all that good stuff. All right, let's get right into how to play this build. And this build is, well, we're going to go with Ecru's strategy of playing, which is almost like a World of Warcraft rogue. It's a lockdown build. A lot of the other assassin builds that you see in play styles, it's all about doing like an initial big damage and then they're chasing around their target and you know, it's, it's kind of hoping that you kill them before they manage to use all their abilities to get away. Well, this here build is going to lock them down. It's go we're going to open up with paralyzed strike. And then we're going to go into foul play and everything like that. And we're going to basically lock them down to where they can't do anything. And they're going to die while still in stun probably. So if you don't know how to uh, see whenever people have their stun immunity up, I will play a clip right now. So as you can see here, there is 
a buff that appears right beside the person's health bar once they get stunned. Well, you don't know when to use your second stun unless you watch that buff go away. Once it's gone beside their health bar, then you can use your second stun, which is going to be our foul play. All right. So, as you can see here, this is uh, the person we're going to attack here is this dummy. And we will not be able to see the stun immunity on the dummies. That's why I had to play the clip for you guys. So, we're going to go into hiding. And what we're wanting to do is make sure that you have your paralyzing strike on your stealth bar here because as you can see the action bar changes once you go into stealth and then I also have jagged strike and elusiveness and incapacitate that way I can uh, use other abilities if I want to in stealth but pretty much we're just going to be focusing on paralyzing strike so we go up and this is going to stun our opponent so we hit our paralyzing strike and since it's a dummy of course it's not getting paralyzed but anybody else it would show the the uh, buff beside their health bar just like you've seen in the clip and you need to watch it because while you're applying your bleeds and everything you have to be ready for whenever that buff goes down you're going to use your foul play which is going to stun them for four more seconds so it's going to be a, a long time that they're going to be sitting there eating a lot of damage from you. All right, so let's pretend that we just opened up with Paralyzing Strike and we haven't used anything else yet. What we're going to use next is our Bleed macro here, which is the third macro on my bar. And you can use K-Alerts or uh, there's also add-ons in uh, Gadget that you can keep track of your bleeds with but you need to keep track of whenever somebody's got bleeds on them. So we're going to go ahead and hit our bleed macro here. And as you can see, the Jagged Strike timer pops up, and so does the Puncture. And then as soon as we got our five combo points, we're going to hit our fourth button here, which is Impale. And that's going to apply another bleed. As you can see, I'm going really slow so you guys can see exactly what's going on. But normally your first two bleeds would still be on and then you would have uh, Impale on there as well. So you would have three bleeds going. Well, by that time, they're probably going to be about out of, stun, out of the stun and you're going to have to apply your foul play. So we're going to go ahead and kick them then. And they probably have all the poisons on them have the three bleeds on them and if it looks like they're getting kind of low go ahead and hit your poison malice poison malice increases the poison buff damage by a hundred percent when hitting melee deals 219 water damage to the attacker lasts for 15 seconds so if you feel like that you're going to be able to kill this person go ahead and apply poison malice while you've got all these bleeds and uh, the poisons all hitting them at once and then all of a sudden your poisons are going to do a hundred percent more damage so it's going to be a very big burst and probably kill the person so we'll go over it one more time here let's go ahead and slip away so you can see that we can slip away right in the middle of the fight so if you get in trouble make sure you hit your slip away macro and go ahead and go back into hiding and get somewhere safe so we're going to go up, we're going to apply our Paralyzing Strike, we're going to go ahead and slap on our Bleeds, we're going to put on our Impale now. So as you can see, and then we're going to put Poison Malice. Bam! Lots and lots and lots of damage. And then we're going to go ahead and just use our Finishers and stuff because now you can see the Puncture went down, so we went ahead and hit our Bleed Macro again to reapply it. Go ahead and just hit your builder and finisher and stuff like that. And then as the bleeds come down, go ahead and reapply them. So we're going to go ahead and hit our bleed macro. We got our jagged strike up, our puncture. And then we're going to do our finisher, which is going to put our finisher bleed, which is impale. So I hope I don't confuse you guys with that. So yeah, it's just that. It's just putting up your three bleeds and you'll have the poisons going on them at all times and yeah then just hit your poison malice if you want to have a really big burst um, it should be said that not only will your stealth 
paralyzing strike you know whenever you go up to the target while you're in stealth and then you use your paralyzing strike it not only stuns them for that duration but it also activates a damage buff for you to where your jagged strike is going to hit 10 percent harder so i believe it's called cruel vengeance that triggers that so yeah go up stun them apply bleeds stun them again poison malice watch them die it's not too hard it's just a little bit of explaining there so if you get in trouble though, make sure that you slip away. Let's say that the opponent turns around, he's doing a lot of damage to me, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit my blinding powder, which is my second CC. I'm gonna blind him, and then I'm gonna slip away. And then we're gonna walk somewhere else because don't keep walking in that straight line. They'll AOE that area that you were just walking towards. So cut to the side or something to get out of any kind of AOE that they might do to try to pull you out. So yeah, that's basically it. It's very, very easy. It's uh, a very enjoyable build to play because if you get in trouble, you can always get out of the trouble. You know, if you're playing a warrior or something and all of a sudden you get a lot of people damaging you, you, you got to die. I mean, if you can't get away as in run buffs and all that stuff, you just die. With this, you can slip away and pick your targets all you want. You can run around like a warrior using charges. We got the two abilities that are basically like charges. You can run around just dotting up everybody, doing a massive amount of damage. Or you can play the sneaky rogue that's off flag capping. And once somebody comes up and tries to take the flag from you, you come out, you paralyze strike, you apply bleeds, you stun them again with your foul play and then you poison malice them and watch those sorry son of a guns drop to the ground so it's real it's a real basic build and uh it can get a little more complicated as you go along because as you learn the build you'll probably want to start splitting up the abilities and stuff a lot of people like to micromanage uh, serpent strike for whenever it procs uh, a lot of people want to make sure that they got their swift uh, swift shot on a separate button rather than just in the spam. Uh, just a lot of stuff like that. But this build here will be very good for you if you're learning. And it'll probably work out really great for you long after you've learned it too. So uh, make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. And as usual, my name is Grim. And I will see you guys next time.